Hello again, it's Priscilla Batzel in Spring Hill, Florida at Expressionist Art Studio Gallery. And I have some colors that I'm going to use for my sky in a moment. Some leftover black. I wanted to show you guys these little plates. This is leftover from last night, and if I throw a little bit more black in there, it'll bring it right back. In the meantime, it's great for covering edges, but that is like 24 hours old. I'm going to use probably my shovel and a container later on. This is the packing material from, I don't know what, it came, it's, it's sort of like styrofoam, only way more flexible, and I used it yesterday for the first time, and it made a great swipe. So I made a couple of little thumbnail sketches, not that you can necessarily see those, but um, I'm going to grab this 16 by 20 inch canvas, and I am going to start by giving myself a very thin layer of sky color. And I'm going to use the Anita's white metallic as a base so that the paint that I add on top of it doesn't necessarily leave a stain. And then I'm going to use some more. I'm probably going to put a whole bunch of everything right there. And I don't mind if it's pastel. I'm going to put a little more of that. And I don't mind if it's light blue either. I love making skies, i got to tell you what. <laughs> and if I don't have to worry too much about what happens, because my plan is to let it dry mostly, so it has to be thin. If I let it dry mostly, then I might be able to put in the orangey yellow clouds that I'm thinking would make it look like those puffy little jewels that you see in a sunset sky when the sky is still blue. I don't know how this is going to work, but I never know how this is going to work. And it'd be really nice if I got my edges covered and no canvas showing, but I figure worst case scenario I can go back and cover that. I always think that um, this is something worth framing as opposed to worrying about whether you can get out your paint all the way to the edges or not. I don't mind if it looks like there's clouds. I may just keep giving myself some more Come back here. Some more paint until I get my, my top covered. I could use my fingers. Once I get some of this paint from below on the spatula and across. I see those things. I see that. <laughs> and I don't know if that's one or not. But right in a minute I'll... Yeah, one more go around. So that is a beautiful sky for me. I like that. And... It's almost what I consider thin enough, but since this is my first time trying this exact configuration, we won't know until we get a little further along into this. And I'm going to keep right on covering my edge with the paint on my spatula. It won't match perfectly, but it'll match better than nothing. Or it'll definitely match better than paint that's gone on straight out of a bottle. You want the paints to mix on the spatula. I might not even want to put those clouds in my sky. Oh, that happens. So what did I do with my crib sheet? Okay, so what I did the other day with that little swipe cloth was interesting and I think it's going to have to come next because it's going to spread out. The thinner the paint is spread out, the less likely it is to move after you get it that way. What a nice blue sky that is. I really like that. I really also don't want that edge to show. And I don't really want any spatula marks so I don't stop halfway through. Although there are occasional marks like that in skies, so it might not be the end of the world. I'm going to rinse that off. And I happen to have a scrubby on top of my sponge and a bucket behind me. But then I'm going to use my wet studio rag. It's mostly damp. Looks like I left some paint on there the other day. That's not good. But it didn't seem to hurt my sky any, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to stop myself from peeling that off right now and put it in the drying rack and fix it later. All right, so now I want some colors. You know what? I'm just going to give them to myself, too. Let's start with, let's continue to use the Anita's White Metallic as a base layer. I'll just grab another spatula. I would usually use black in this case, and I may put some black on top, and the black I want to use in between that will make cells with the white 
and do everything else I want it to do will probably be the acrylic enamel. And I'm going to put a little bit more of that because I don't see that that's going to be a problem. It basically, you can see the blue right through it. It shows everything. That's why I, I think of it as my, the water for watering things down in my watercolors. But it also has shimmer, so it can add shimmer to things. I'm going to try not to worry about that edge on this side. I'm just going to keep spreading that up to the horizon line in case I need it. Because sometimes I do this and I find that I need something to uh, just kiss that horizon line and bring it down a little further so that if I don't want to do something there, I don't have to. Now on this side, I don't think it's going to make any difference because I'm planning on adding a different texture by shoveling paint on and tipping it and having it be semi almost last. We'll see about the clouds. The clouds may just get puddle poured and left. So let's move on. Uh, I keep doing that. <laughs> I wish I'd stop. Alright, so. I'm just going to give myself the colors that I usually put in my puddle pours that become swipes. I opened all these bottles except for this one. Okay, it's not that bad. I'm going to keep moving. This ought to be interesting. I haven't done this exactly like this before except for that that other piece. I want some purple in there, that's all there is to it. And I can pick up my little, my little swipe tool from here or there. I don't want to get an overabundance of paint in there, and I think I'm going to put my, that's, that's my, I, I coated it red. That's my enamel. I don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to have, I'm just going to, that's flow troll. Okay, I need to have a look at this. I think... I can't do this without my favorite green gold from Folk Art. The purple, uh, excuse me, I'm not sure about the purple actually. I think it's a dioxidine purple is the dark one. The next one up probably has some iridescent pearl fine medium added into it. Right after I do this the first time, I think I'm going to take that paint and put it right over the edge and even bring it to the edge of the tile to do so. I hope it works half as well as it did the last time because that will be pretty cool. Just going to keep covering. I've got a piece of something stuck to the bottom of my canvas. Dry paint! <laughs> Go figure! Now if I don't like it and uh, I'm already making a puddle pour that I'm going to tip over here, then I'm not going to worry about it. But I like the idea of using the texture because this combination often sells or I can't say often because I haven't done it often, but it sold the first time <laughs> and this is the second time. And depending on what I see and what I like and what I don't like, I can add more paint. It's pretty simple. I can change my directions and just basically using my little swipe card like a, like a brush. And I can just, I can put anything I want over here because I'm going to be pouring something else there. I'm hoping I can do this in the amount of time I've left myself. And I'm hoping I can make it interesting looking. Because this is more manipulated than a lot of things. I can also use the edge of that card, but I'm not sure it'll heal. If it's heavy enough, it'll heal. If it's not, it won't. I like that... Um, they're, they're calling this minty green, they're calling it emerald now. And because I don't want to worry about it, I think I'm just going to give myself some more paint right there. I wasn't really happy about seeing those cells go, but I'm not going to know if there are going to be more cells coming unless I swipe again. Now, in theory, I could probably use a clean one of these. And I don't know how it's going to mix it, if it's going to be too much mixing. But I think it's going to be okay. And my edges are covered. 
and I'm just learning, so bear with me. Okay, so that is what it is, I guess. I like this turquoise color, and I think what that makes me want to do is pull some turquoise, and maybe I'm going to throw a little bit of Prussian blue in there, because there's a chance. I still want some black. Also, if I want more texture, I've got my basting brush. And Flow Troll is in the mix. The paint pouring recipe is under the video, but Flow Troll is in my mixture every time, which means it's a paint leveler. Which means no matter what I do as far as my paint goes, oh, that's cool. I don't know how I'm going to like that later or what's going to happen to it with the level. I should leave some of that no matter what to see. I think I'm going to have to do the same thing up here. Sort of dipping. All right, so I'm going to try and keep moving. If I have to do this in two parts, I will. So I'm going to give myself some of the same colors. I'm going to add a little bit of copper, which I probably could have. Where's my little card? There, a little bit goes a long way. Probably won't even see this in a minute. There, I like that. Cool. Excellent. Impact. Now I could puddle pour this right onto the canvas and tip it. And I want to put that right up there where you can see it, but I can't really do everything all at once that I want to. I'll try. Let's use that copper again. And I'll put some of that black in there. And it's going to be interesting to try and get enough colors into this one puddle to do what I want. But I'm going to try. I think, where is it? I've got some, I've got some bronze that's really similar but a lighter shade of that copper. And I think what I really like is the green gold from Folk Art that's a color shift. And something to be weird. Let's have something weird. Let's have a little bit of that Decor Americana metallic berry. And then just hit it one more time. So if I really want that to spread well, I'm probably going to have to change my mind and give myself a layer of something. And the layer of something that I'm going to give myself is going to be black. It doesn't matter what's on the spatula. You can push that bead right into the edge of whatever. I expect that I'm probably going to be flowing it anyway. I should have shown you guys that in between. It's, it's kind of cool right now. The fact that there's that white metallic underneath might be a hindrance as far as when I stick my finger in there to try and fill a void and, and make that color match. It basically just goes down to the white. So it probably would have been a better idea, in my opinion, and next time I will use black. Or whatever I feel like I have enough of that's a darker color. So that's all got to go up, I've just realized. But that's okay. Yes, I'm pulling on that just because I want to see what happens when I do that. All right, that's going in the bucket. Here goes my nothing. I'm going to grab my colors. I need a whole lot more on this side, I think. I probably could use an edge catcher. If I've got a small one around here somewhere, and I think I do, I will grab that right now. Well, small edge. I don't need it to be the full size of the painting because I'm only going to be using it on part. So this is going to be different because it's going to be combining the two different methods and seeing if I can fill in. And I think I'm going to use a Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatula and just lead that paint right along there. And I'm not going to mind 
Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I didn't leave myself enough paint to go up above, but it's in my spatula, so there's nothing going to stop me from using it. I've often wanted a more textured area, and this is definitely a good way to get that. I do see that I've left something up here. A little splat becomes a new extension of the landscape. Oh, we've even got some funky rocks. That's cool. All right, I've got beautiful cells in my pan of colors. I'm going to use my Princeton Art Tool Catalyst Spatula. And like I said, I have GAC 800 to keep my paint from cracking. It's in all my mixtures, as well as the photo troll. The recipe, the recipe is below the description, under Show More, under the video, under my email address, where you can contact me in case you're interested in purchasing something, and the link tree which is where all my links are, including my website, Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter links, stuff like that. That's pretty cool. So the only thing left is the trees that I had in mind. Let's just use that down there. Like I said, I don't need to tip this. I might do it anyway, because I'm here. <laughs> because I can. That's the name of my book on the Amazon link, right next to my second book on the Amazon link, which is called Unlimited Possibilities. I think that's just a little splat, which means there's going to be a cloud there. The canvases lately have had a little bit of texture. So I've got two minutes to do... Oh, and my skewer is stuck to my lolofy mat. I've got two minutes to do whatever I'm going to do, and I'm thinking that I would be better off with a part two than to try and rush. So I'm just going to keep working for the next two minutes and tell you guys, you can check out my Facebook groups if you're interested in being a student. It's Expressionist Art Studio Gallery Appreciation Group for people who are just learning and people who know what they're doing after and have been doing it for a little while and they share what they're up to with you. They're always experimenting and having a good time. I might keep and use any of that paint being tipped off under that edge catcher after I rock, rock my edge a little bit. Let's see what I've got. And then I could just pick it up with my OXO omelette turning spatula, also available on the Amazon link. And best paint spreading tool I know of. I want a little bit of paint right there. And I think I'm going to take everything I've got here and put a couple of areas in at the bottom. And then I'll come back and do my clouds, and maybe that'll work, and maybe it won't. But I've still, in the meantime, I want to tell you guys, thank you for sharing my videos. Thank you for watching them when the, when the notification comes, because that's a really important aspect of uh, getting me the viewership that I deserve on YouTube, which I don't pretty much ever. <laughs> but um, I never said this one was easy, but some of them I will. I have been doing a few things for beginners, and I'll try harder to do that as time goes on. It's just, I like to do what I know how to do and um, I get inspired while I'm working and that's cool. Having those two separate areas is really cool. And I see that this is a hard line but that's gonna be a good place for a cloud. And I've got one minute left and I told you, oh, thank you for the shares, I said that. Thank you for the likes, your thumbs up are really appreciated so don't forget me if you, if you can manage that. Um, Teespring clothing under the video is all over print leggings and t-shirts and a lot more. The Amazon link, when you shop there, you help me out. It's a uh, little comes to me. It costs you nothing extra to shop there. You can shop for my Amazon link, anything you want on Amazon. My books are there. I mentioned that. The community board on my YouTube channel has uh, today's video and may have tomorrow's video on if you check the night before. Depends on <laughs> whether I posted it correctly or not. I'm so sorry about that. Um, Facebook group Ex Expressionist Art Studio. Uh, fans and collectors, is if you want to see the wet and dry artworks that have been edited from my YouTube videos, I'll be looking for anything I need before I start the camera again. I said my recipe was under the video, but if I forgot for some reason, my recipe is under the under this under mm, description, under show more under the video. And um, I love you guys. Bye for now. Priscilla out. I'll be back in a minute, and I'll talk to you then.
I don't know about that little hole there. I kind of like it and I kind of don't. Maybe I'll do a couple more. 